in the end, they can't help you. All the riches in the world, all the wealth in the world can't help you. Wealth, reputation, status, stature, standing, everything that wealth promises in some way to save you fails you. You're left empty, naked, and lost standing before your maker. That's it. That's the end. That's where this God leads. That's the end game with this God if you're serving it in that way. This is what the Lord called the deceitfulness, the deceitfulness of riches. Do you know that? The deceitfulness. So in, in Matthew, or Mark chapter 4, this is the parable of the sowers. Here are those people that say, look, I believe, and this is where it comes in for us too. When we're talking about people, you can say, well, I don't really, I'm a Christian and I'm okay with it. Listen, man, it's right on top of you too. This is competing for your affection as well and for your loyalty as well. Don't think Satan's standing still and saying, oh, you're a Christian. I'm just going to leave you alone in this area. No, 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 no. I'm coming after you with guns. I'm coming after you with those arrows. I want you to take your eyes off the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, have that wealth. No, you don't have enough. No, you do need some more. Huh? Just because you're a Christian doesn't mean you can't have, and it's there. So we need to be warned, like Paul warned earlier in Timothy. But here, Mark 4 says, there were those seeds that were sown among the thorns. And those who hear the word, they hear the word. But what happens? They hear the word of the Lord. It's not taken away right away. It doesn't spring up quickly, then go away. But you hear the word of the Lord. Say, yeah, I like this. I'm okay with it. But the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches. The deceitfulness. And the desire for other things. Enter in and choke out the word and prove to be unfruitful. Now, Some people say that this person may be saved, truly, but kind of like a carnal Christian over there. Others say, no, 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 no. These are people that make a profession of faith. They're in church all the time, but their mind is somewhere else. Their mind is on their job. Their mind is on their money. Their mind is about living this life. And so the word gets choked out. That's what, and I'm in that camp and saying that, that you're going to stand before the Lord and say, Lord, didn't I do this? And I go to church. Depart from me. I never knew you. Why? Because you were so worried about everything else and about the deceitfulnesses of riches in this world. That's our connection even to the Ecclesiastes passage. Because a false god deceives us. It's a counterfeit. And it deceives you into thinking that it can give you what you need. But all that does is divert your attention from who you truly need, and that's Jesus Christ. And that's a real danger for those in the church especially because you think you have the Lord, but he doesn't have you, and then you don't have him. So the deceitfulness of riches can take our eyes off of Christ. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 18, this is who we need, and this is what I want you to hear this morning, especially as you sit here in church. 2 Corinthians 8, 9, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and here's the language, though he was rich. What's that mean? He was rich. He's God. God incarnate. God incarnate. That's who he is. He was rich. Yet, for your sake, he became poor. You know that? For your sake. Here's Christ. He's rich. He's God. And yet he lowers himself. He lays aside his glory. This is the humiliation of Christ. He comes in to this world to identify with you. You who are depending on everything else to save you. Some of you are depending on your wealth and your money to save you. Whatever else you're depending on, he became poor for you. For sinners like us. He laid it all aside. His richness. And became poor. For sinners who are unable to save themselves, no matter with all the money you have, all the power, anything you have, you cannot save yourself. He identified with us. He lived a sinless life that we could never live. He died a substitutionary death that we deserve to die. And he gave us something that all the riches in the world, all the money, all the power, all the prestige, all the reputation could never purchase for us. He pays the price that you benefit from. 